Hi, Marisa Fox. My name is Elena. I'm an artist, a researcher, and an entrepreneur. Today, I am so excited to welcome a special guest on my channel in my video for the first time ever a pianist, a sound engineer, a videographer, a blogger, a secret participant of all the intertwining arts projects behind the scenes, a 24 7 customer support, and my eternal partner in crime, Danish Danov. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to this video. It's a very weird experience being interviewed by my wife, but let's see how it goes. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I invited Dennis uh, to my channel not only because of all the things that I listed before, but he has a very important skill for a performer that I felt like no one else would be a better person, a better artist to share out of everyone I know at the moment. And I can see it every day and during every performance of his. We are going to discuss stress management, especially for performers, for the artists who have to present their art at a certain moment, in a certain place, and no matter how much you work for many, many months, you still have to nail it during your stage performance. And I know that a lot of people present their art in a very different way on stage from what they usually have in a practice room, in a practice hall. And today we will discuss what Dennis has to share about his experiences and about what he knows, what he uses, what tactics he tackles. And yeah, my first question to you is how do you cope with pressure on stage? And considering that you have participated in so many top level international competitions, so we have concerts and we have competitions, are they different for you? How do you treat both of these categories of performances or they are the same? And what do you do in order to stay in control? Uh, long story short, I try to be prepared. Uh, yeah, okay, I know what you mean. But um, honestly, during many years, I didn't really feel myself as um, relaxed on competitions, of course, because this is just a different story. Because in most of cases, um, People don't come to your performance to enjoy the music, they come to give you grades and to compare you to others. So, of course, it's a different set, a different story. And um, it's very difficult to remain yourself and to share your music and your passion. But what helps me personally is always to uh, separate myself and the musical material that I should um, present. So, for example, before the performance, I really try to leave everything what uh, my personality contains behind the stage and uh, to concentrate solely on the uh, musical piece and its needs. Very interesting. I'm sure it's going to be helpful to, to many artists out there. My next question is probably not only related to a performance situation, but also because I know you personally uh, from life experiences and how you act usually. How do you evaluate your options and choices? Because we have a lot of stressful situations, not only when we perform, but generally. You are always very calm. Is there any path that you use to arrive into this calm state of mind? I think that's very personal. Uh, I know artists uh, who are performing really great, but in order to achieve this uh, performing state, they have to make a lot of drama, scandals, and uh, to drink a lot of blood of uh, their family members and so on. I think I'm just kind of a opposite personality. So before the, uh, before the performance, I feel the need to uh, kind of get into, into my box and stay there in kind of an energy-saving mode. That's why I'm very quiet and um, I, I would be rather irritated 
uh, if I would need to interact with people because for me it's like I, sh I should go to some shell and just stay there uh, till the very moment I go on stage and it helps me to um, to spare energy and not to uh, not, not to lose this uh, focus before I go on stage but please don't um, mix calm people and people who look calm because if the person looks calm it doesn't mean that they are calm actually of course I have a lot of anxiety sometimes especially for example um, when you didn't have concerts for quite a while and then you suddenly get something big so you have to like go tomorrow and uh, to perform in a big hall and when it is not a routine when it's something that happens after a break of course I feel a lot of um, uh, excitement and sometimes I even have problems getting asleep not because I'm afraid of the performance but because it's just an exciting experience adrenaline yeah kind of rushes in and uh, that's a problem actually and here you have to really find some uh, some ways to calm yourself down and uh, what helps me a lot is I think that we have problems on stage mostly because of this urge to conform expectations you know we, we have to meet expectations of ourselves of our teachers of people who uh, paid for a ticket and so on and then we try to be as perfect as possible and um, that's a problem actually one violinist said that uh, you know I I don't try to be perfect I always try to play like 80% huh. and it works way better than when I'm trying to give uh, 100% then always something goes wrong so probably this um, stress uh, related to the necessity of being perfect really takes away a lot of uh, quality a lot of comfort and a lot of uh, inspiration actually mm -hmm. because you can't be really inspired if you are stressed if you must be perfect totally true totally true that's a very good tip i think to aim not for 100 percent but for 80 percent to kind of give yourself some room for yeah. for in something case, yeah. unexpected yeah? in this case you accept the fact that you are not perfect and uh, it's very important even uh, in relation with other people if you feel that the person expects so much of you and you don't really meet these expectations it's very important to accept the fact that okay okay this is very sad but I can't really fulfill expectations of this person fully and that might be my fault but it's very important to um, accept this do you actually have any particular practices or mantras or something that you do as a ritual in order to retain your control on stage something on before stage. A performance or no of course not course. not during the performance yeah. but something you do particularly or you think of something or I don't know uh, meditate or whatnot something that you really do as a ritual that is a must for you and then you're comfortable and then you go and perform if, if there is anything like this of this well um, nowadays I think that you don't really need any rituals but when I was younger I, I always had some I always used to have some for example I I was always doing some physical exercises at times I even huh. did a headstand yeah because I thought that it uh, stimulates uh, blood circulation and I will be more um, vivid and, and energized but I think that uh, the very fact that we are kind of separating this normal life and performances this is also causes um, this um, problem because as our brilliant teacher Lisa Versaladze said you have to practice the way you perform and you have to perform the way you practice <laughs> and this was a, an absolutely discovery for me because uh, then you understand that it's not much difference you know you perform or you practice those are parts of the same process of the same living process so it it is directed to unify our life and not really take apart those parts of our lives because if you're an artist you must be always an artist it's it's a religion really <laughs> lifestyle well if you have your religion as art <coughs> what can be more beautiful <laughs> Do you ever experience anxiety, like a pre-performance stress as, you know, you're afraid 
you're not going to be able to do your best or something is really wrong? Is there like a feeling that you're scared of something really that is pressing you down? And if yes, then how, how do you deal with it? Maybe sometimes if I'm not sure that I'm prepared enough. That's why I have my own techniques uh, how to prepare actually to the performance to make sure that I'm really ready. Um, Check out his blog, by the way. You have that? Yeah, I have that. You have that. a video. Yes, yes. He has a lot of great videos but, on that as well. But even if I see that I really didn't get time, for example, to prepare as great as I could, if I really see that, most probably it won't be my best performance. Also, it's very important just to accept this fact. And here uh, you have something that we call um, professional haltura. It's like it's like faking. Fake it faking till you make mastery. it, but yeah. it's no, it's different. You can. Uh, I don't know how to translate that. Uh, yeah, in, in Russian it's what yeah. you said, professionalna kultura, but in English, I don't know. But I have to check it. Out. The thing <laughs> is that in many situations, uh, it's not even that important. Uh, either uh, whether you would be perfect or not. In many situations, just important, enjoy the moment and let others enjoy it. And very often you play for the audience that doesn't consist from uh, university music professors who would really judge each note of you and uh, give you some degrees and or some harsh criticism. Very often those are just people who come to enjoy the concert. So even if you're not perfect, you might still be able to say something, to express yourself. You know. mm -hmm. And for this situation, uh, general, for uh, performance situations, I have kind of a special button somewhere in my head. So um, I really try to train this ability. Uh, when you really kind of turn a switch and you just get to this performance mode, doesn't matter how you feel yourself, because sometimes you have to perform when you're sick or when you didn't sleep a night or whatever, when you are not really prepared in the way you, you would like to. But there should be some drive button uh, that really allows you to immediately enter this state of uh, performance mode. So very often I feel like, for example, if I didn't sleep at night, it happens sometimes, yes, when you just can't sleep before the concert, you can't do anything about that. And, uh, especially with jet lag, if you are especially with somewhere lag, yes. else. Oh yeah. Yeah, sure. And you feel absolutely like destroyed before the performance, and uh, uh, sometimes I just really kind of fallen asleep, like s standing backstage with the conductor and the orchestra is already like um, tuning and uh, so on, and I have to go on stage, and I feel as myself like really terrible. Yeah. But the very moment when you cross this door entrance and you, when you step on stage there should be some switch that you might be able just to turn on a power up button <laughs> yeah kind of that and because we always have more limits than we think we have we always have some reserves somewhere like a spare S yes, container like sp of energy yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can last a lot of time actually using those reserves uh -huh. of course this is not healthy after such yeah. performances when i have to appeal to such reserves i feel <laughs> like destroyed devastated, you know like really yeah. devastated afterwards but for the for the very performance time uh, it can save you really yeah wonderful tip all the performing artists have to balance between being highly emotional on stage because we deliver content that is very deep, whether it's music, whether it's theater, whether it's dance, right? So all the performing arts, we have to live through our art on stage at that moment and we have to give most of our energy and at the same time, we have to retain a cold mind, right? So we don't forget what we are playing, dancing, whatever. So we don't get lost. So we know what's going on. We don't forget our text, whatnot, if you are playing or singing or reciting or steps if you're dancing. So what do you think should be the percentage? I don't know how to put it. Uh, between the emotional presence, participation 
when we give our all and we still have to stay kind of cold minded we still have to retain this distance in order to control our instruments or our bodies and the, the space the stage space for those performers who are using the entire stage for example with movement so what are your thoughts on this uh, for me, it's not about percentage as much. This is uh, more about separation uh, between emotion that must be conveyed through the piece of art and emotions that I feel as a human being put in this certain situation. And if you learn to separate that, you might um, resolve the problem of losing concentration because of the emotions. Because those are different emotions and different stages of presence. And uh, when I practice, when I prepare myself uh, for the performance, I really try to work through all emotional components of my performance as well. And I really kind of teach myself being emotional in this or in that way, because I want to be able to reproduce this emotional reaction on stage as well. So you develop kind of emotional pathways, if, if I can put it this way. Yeah. So when during I practice, your preparation. I know that many people uh, think that uh, you have to kind of spare yourself during the practice session in order to give um, the best result on stage. But for me, it doesn't really work like that. I might spare myself only on the day of the performance. But when I'm working um, before, like day before or week before, I really try to achieve a 100% state, emotional state, when I would be fully... Um, engaged with mm -hmm. what I'm playing. Although I might play through the piece like being um, myself in a small room, but nevertheless I really kind of model the situation on stage and I really try to imagine how I would feel myself there and what kind of emotions I would have. So I really try to program myself for this performance. And then uh, everything what comes on top, this anxiety, this stress, this necessity to impress someone or fright that something might go wrong, you deal with that separately <laughs> using some uh, psychological analysis about what's happening to you and why you really feel yourself in this way, why it is important for you to make this impression and so on and so on. So it's before the performance or after if something happens that you didn't expect like uh, like you were you had anxiety more than yes, of course, if something you go, analyze it afterwards you may analyze it afterwards although it might help you only to, for the next performance of course it, it won't save the performance that happened so i will try to think one step in advance so you do it before yes so you just sit down and analyze everything that's going on i don't know in in your brain yeah i mean i mean it comes with the experience obviously you learn to control yourself and uh, you change your attitude to performances through the career, obviously. Uh, but uh, it's just very important to understand that everything that you feel is driven by some uh, psychological processes mm -hmm. uh, being run somewhere. Um, in the background. In the background, <laughs> yes. So if you have any issue, if you have any emotional reaction that you don't like, you must be able to find a way to sort it out. Yeah, so we have to kind of be our own psychologists in a way. Not obviously, you can ask a professional help of a psychologist. I mean, yes, but as an artist who delivers emotional performances and engages the audience, it's also our job to kind of figure it out, to be able to figure some things out with ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's I always, if, if you can't really find an answer for a question, it's always better to ask someone who knows better. Of course, of course. But I think it's important to also be able to analyze, at least to try to think about yeah. these, these things, because it's essential, since we are responsible for this emotional message to, to the other people, sure. to the audience, I guess. Actually, this, um, this course that we used to have in Switzerland... Um, we don't have anything like that in the uh, Eastern Which Europe, one? but in Switzerland they have a special course, uh, Auftrittsforum. Ah, uh, like the performance uh, performance forum? training. Performing yeah. performance training, yeah. Yeah, where people meet and uh, students just play a very short performance for other students, and then they discuss not the interpretation, but how the person looks on stage, what kind of impression they get, and there's always a um, professional. Um, 
psychologist or a physician physical therapist physical therapist who analyzes your behavior and who tells you oh you know when you played this piece you had a jaw like blocked or tense so it's like body language it's, yeah and so they tensions. really analyze your um, tension issues mostly oh, this is amazing because we don't notice these things usually and then we notice them when it's too late i guess yeah, yeah. but everything uh, like everything uh, influences your um, result on, on stage and also how you look and how you feel obviously your body language tells to the uh, amateur audience much more actually than what you actually produce so that's it's true. also an important part of yeah. your preparation absolutely and i think the body language influences the quality as well because if for example i know from my own experience if i may add a bit if a difficult passage is coming up i have to relax i have to really let my hands flow then i will be able to play it and if i'm really tense then probably i will get stuck in the middle and yeah, i think it's absolutely. very very important to kind of have this kind of control too even of course we're not we cannot be relaxed during the performance 100 percent because we're not on the beach yeah. but to know those moments when you have to just let go let it be let it be and then then it flows i think that's helpful do you have any tips on how to retain this best quality potential performance and bring it from the practice room to the stage? Because of course we'll practice for for months and yeah, it's many hours a day if we are getting ready for a concert, but then when you come out, you want to actually be able to do your best and not not 60%, not to be uh, thinking, oh, I, it was so much better at home or in the practice room. Oh, why did it come out like this? Like not not good enough. Yeah, finding a balance between uh, s uh, bet between uh, a strive for perfection and um, <laughs> comfortable feeling. As we I'm told. asking like him very tough maybe, questions. <laughs> yeah, maybe eighty percent strategy might That's still one. work better. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, what helps me is just modeling. I mean, if I'm preparing to perform in some certain hall, I might even look at photos or mm -hmm. just visit it first. So I really mm -hmm. imagine what kind of space is that. And during the rehearsal, I really try to model the situation and to kind of program myself how exactly I will feel myself on stage. And that helps, actually, we are programmable, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Mm. Yeah, that's true. A lot depends on your preset mode in a way. And I th I have a feeling that doesn't matter how prepared you are, but if you uh, skip this uh, psychological preparation for the performance, you still might not get the result you want. Yeah. Because it's, I know so many uh, cases when musicians were really super ready for the performance, but when it comes, they just get stuck and mm -hmm. something goes wrong and they don't really show their potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a pity, of course. Of course. Not so long ago, I learned that many artists, unfortunately, are experiencing such an anxiety that they have to take medications before going to the stage. Or they cannot perform physically, they get so tense that they cannot control the instrument, they don't know what's going on, they're not sure where they are, and things can get really really stressful i had honestly i had no idea i have been on stage since the age of five and for me when i was so young the idea of being scared was just not understandable because i, I loved it and uh, um, of course my my parents who are professional pianists they made sure that i was prepared of course i didn't come out to the stage without knowing what to do but it didn't occur to me that you kind of can be scared because i was so little but probably for the people who start later they already have this background of some experience preceding experiences and then they get really tense and really stressed that they have to actually take some pills some chemicals to to help them perform what's what are your thoughts on this have you heard about that and do you think it's helpful and how how can this issue be solved honestly i i don't know what to because i don't know much about that issue but uh, i have a subjective feeling that in this case you are dealing with the consequence so you're trying to reduce the consequence you're not um, addressing the reason mm -hmm. like it's a thing the, like the cause. this morning i felt a terrible headache i don't know why but uh, my head was just blowing away and uh, i uh, 
I took some um, pain relief pill just in order to um, to function today, but it it doesn't really address the cause because I understand that I'm still sick. I'm still not feeling well, and to address that, I might be able to rethink what have I done yesterday. Why do I feel myself bad today? Maybe I work too much, and actually I work too much, you and did. that uh, probably was <laughs> was the reason. Yeah. But uh, in order to resolve the problem, we really have to uh, find roots of it. So. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I also agree that just simply taking the meds doesn't help in the long run because if you're stuck with it for the rest of your life, yeah, it's not going to. If it's an emergency, of course. Not do but, you good. but I'm pretty sure that you can really sort out such problems uh, through some, of course, it takes time, it's much more painful and uh, longer way, for example, uh, taking a course of some psychological treatment and yeah. really to deal with this problem and uh, analyze deeply what happens in your brain um, somewhere and in your soul, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a much more effective solution after all, I, I believe. What would be your advice to emerging artists to young performers, musicians, dancers, uh, actors. I'm not talking about visual arts because that's that's a different process. We're talking more about performing on stage, but for all the performers, is there something you can share now from your huge experience? Uh, don't try to be perfect, try to be unique. <laughs> that's amazing. If you are interested in uh, learning piano with Dennis, who has this kind of an approach to performance, as you just heard, if you listen to everything we discussed, if you like his approach, if you want to look at his videos, his channel is in the description below. Please check it out and subscribe. He offers online lessons as well. If you would like to learn with him privately, you can check out his performances and piano tutorials. Dennis has studied in Ukraine, in Italy, in England, in Switzerland. Did I miss something? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, good. Okay, I can remember your biography. That's important because it's very extensive. He has the background from many teachers, many countries, you can read his biography and uh, the list of all the competitions he's won. I'm not gonna list it here because then this video will be running until tomorrow. He speaks Russian, Ukrainian, English and German, Italian as well. Do you offer lessons in Italian? Mm, not really. No, not Maybe he will. Maybe, Maybe he will. If you're from Italy, he can speak Italian. I know he can. Uh, so he can teach in all those languages. I offer consultations for artists, not only performing artists, but also visual artists. How to organize your creative projects, how to be an entrepreneur, how to prepare your grant applications, budgets, project descriptions, artist statements, and all these things. If you want to learn about that more, I have made a set of videos for artists who are entrepreneurs and I'm offering my free consultations. You can sign up for a private consultation with me and it's also below. Subscribe to this channel, subscribe to Dennis's channel, like this video, hit the bell button. We are wishing you an amazing week and hopefully this video was helpful for performing artists and not only because we have stress not only on stage but also in real life. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.